Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Spring Cleaning with Pull Everywhere. I'm going to give everyone a few minutes to join us today. I hope everyone is having a lovely day. The weather in Southern California is surprisingly cold and gloomy, um, but I am looking forward to warmer days and summer weather. Okay, I hope everyone is settled in, grab a snack, you know, get some coffee. It's going to be a lot of content today that I hope you enjoy. Okay. All right, let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Spring Cleaning with Pull Everywhere. My name is Lenny, and I'm the marketing coordinator here at Pull Everywhere, and I'm also your webinar host for today. Here are a few fun facts about me. I love social media, houseplants, and of course, Pull Everywhere. And as we go along in today's session, feel free to ask me any questions and I'd be happy to help you. Now, if you've been working from home this past year, just like me, then you've done everything on your computer. Our computers now hold all of our memories. Funny memes, we've sent our decks that are titled deck one underscore final underscore edit underscore last underscore three. <laughs> and a million screenshots of the Zoom gallery wall as we celebrated birthdays, holidays, and hosted happy hours virtually. And if you're also like me, you may have used Poll Everywhere to feel more connected with your virtual audience, and now you have a ton of duplicated or old activities that you don't use anymore. We've all been spending way more time in our digital spaces, and it is time for a refresh. The goal of today's session is to provide some tips on how to organize your digital space introduce some of my favorite activity types to energize your audience, and share some advice on how to keep your Poll Everywhere account neat and up to date so you, you can have a seamless presentation. So onto the agenda. Today we're covering fun activity types to engage your audience, how to customize your activities to create a bright and summery look, and ways to keep your account organized. We'll have a live Q&A session at the end so I can answer any of your questions and I will also be sharing a sneak peek of an exciting new feature coming soon. Today's session will be recorded and after it's over, we will be sharing a link to the recording. Also throughout the session, if you have any questions at all, I'll be answering questions at the end of the session. So feel free to drop those in the Zoom Q&A box as they come up and my lovely teammate Abby will be in the chat answering your questions. Throughout this session, I'll be demoing activities that you can all participate in. Just head over to pollev.com slash webinar and see your responses in action. This is also a great way to get a taste of what your participants or students will see during your Poll Everywhere presentations. All right, let's start off with a fun icebreaker. Let me just give this a second to... Oh. to activate, you know, sometimes this happens, no worries. Okay, there we go. So head to pollev.com slash webinar to participate in this fun icebreaker. As I mentioned earlier, we've been living in our digital spaces for far too long. So select all that apply to you right now. So do you have a messy desktop screen? Do you have outdated software? or a million different you know, apps and tech tools that you don't even use anymore, or you know, a bajillion more notifications that you need to clear. I am definitely in this area. Um, so let's see where everyone's at. So it looks like we have quite a few people with messy desktops, totally normal. It happens, you know, saving to your desktop is kind of the easiest thing to do, but you know, this is what happens when you do that. Looks like we have some people who have some crazy notifications. I'm with you. I think my app has like a thousand or so emails that I need to clear, mostly spam. Looks like we have some people who have too many apps for sure. And some people who need to update their software, you better update it, it's important. Okay, it looks like we have more people in the notifications section, but yeah. Hopefully, 
Um, I can help you, you know, fix these problems in a bit, but let's see um, if anyone else wants to drop a pin before we move on. Okay. So it looks like most of you are kind of in this notification section. So let's go over some tips on staying organized and preventing all of this from happening. So when we are working and having fun all day in our digital spaces, things can get out of hand, as you all saw. In the same way that cleaning your physical space can improve your mental health and productivity, it is important to clear your digital space and organize it in a way that can improve your efficiency and productivity. So first, organize your desktop into folders. If you're on a Mac like me, you can set folders that automatically group files of the same type, like images. And next, add filters to your inbox to group incoming emails. Similar to the folders, you can automatically filter your emails and archive those that don't pertain to your work. And next, keep all software up to date. This may seem unrelated, but keeping your software up to date is important to ensure all of your tech is running smoothly and will stop all of those pesky notifications. It is also important to keep your device secure by keeping it up to date. And next, clear your trash. Make some room on your device by clearing your trash. And then next, delete apps you don't use anymore. Again, make room and clear your digital clutter. Lastly, update your notification settings for all applications. Seeing a giant pile of notifications demanding your attention can be stressful and may hurt your productivity. Go into your apps and remove notifications you don't need. This will give you more peace of mind and keep you off apps you don't need to check and will clear your device. So now that we have that, Let's go into our Poll Everywhere account and start creating some fun activities. So for those of you who are new to Poll Everywhere, then what you are seeing now is the activities dashboard. This is where you can create, organize, and arrange your activities in a way that makes sense to you. I share this account with my teammate, Abby, and because we both present different webinars every week, we've kept our activities organized into these folders. As you can see, it is super easy for me to find my own webinars. I host Getting Started, and it's also super easy for Abby to find hers. She hosts the large Teams webinar, so keeping things organized just makes things easier for everyone. For a more detailed breakdown of the activities dashboard and info on how to create activities, um, I recommend you register for our Getting Started webinar, a little plug for myself at pulleverywhere.com slash webinars. All right, back to the activities. As I mentioned before, I want to share some of my favorite activity types that will definitely get your audience excited and ready for your presentation. So let's start creating. So I'm just gonna click new activity and this is our activity creator tool. So the first activity I want to create today is a word cloud. A word cloud is one of my favorites because it is very lively, colorful, and interactive. Word clouds are perfect for icebreakers, pulse checks, and big picture questions that reveal a trend among the crowd. So the question I'd like to ask you today, because this is spring cleaning, what is your favorite flower? So as you can see, I have added my question. Now, in order to stay organized, I will add this to the folder for today's webinar. So that's May 13th, spring cleaning. You just do that with this drop down here. And I plan on creating a few more activities. So I'm just gonna click add another activity. And now that's done. And now next I will make a ranking activity. So ranking activities are fun because you can get an idea of your participants' preferences, enter your prompt and the different options, and see how your audience orders them. At Poll Everywhere, we love asking people to rank their favorite things. So today I'd like to ask, rank your favorite summer berries. So we have blueberries, blackberries, Strawberries, of course, raspberries, red currants, and black currants. So um, now that I've added all of my options, I'm just going to click add another activity. Look, it's already in the folder I want it to be in. So 
the next activity I want to create today is a competition. So competitions are the most exciting poll, at, poll everywhere activity you can use. Competitions are a combination of multiple choice activities with added elements such as a timer and a leaderboard to add a bit of friendly competition to your activity. Competitions are great for live trivia games, quick quizzes, and more. So for today's demonstration, I will show you how to create a competition, but we will not play one because you'll see me put in the answers. So if you wish to participate in a live competition, I recommend you attend the Getting Started webinar or just making your own. So as you can see here, um, when you make a competition, you have to put in a title. So today's theme is spring cleaning. So let's put, let's spring clean. And then I'm just gonna do one question today. So of course, because we can't do spring cleaning without the queen herself. So my question is, who said, does this spark joy? So obviously the answer is Marie Kondo, but I'm just gonna put my different options here. So Marie Kondo, Marie Antoinette, and Marie Curry. So with competitions, you do have to set a correct answer so that um, people can get scores for their, um, get points for their responses. So I'm gonna click the check mark and that'll click um, Marie Kondo as the correct answer. Now with competitions, you don't have to have just one answer. You can mark multiple correct, but in this case, the answer is Marie Kondo. Now, if I were to create a full-fledged competition, I would just click add another question that'll allow me to add more questions. But just for the sake of today, I'm pretty happy with where things are at. So I'm just gonna click create. And that'll take me here. Again, I'm not presenting the competition because y'all know the answer already, but I'm just gonna head back to the activities page. So now that you've created your activities, you will find them in the folder that you put them in. So I'm just gonna expand this folder and you see it's the ones we made are now in the May 13th spring cleaning folder. So nice and organized. Now, currently they are in the order that I made them, but I'd actually like to rearrange them. So I won't be presenting the competition, so I'm just gonna leave that there. And I actually wanna do the ranking first and then the word cloud. So I'm just gonna hold and you can easily drag and drop the different activities to change the order within your folder, but you can also drag them into other folders as well. So in this case, I do want to keep this here, but I'm just gonna put that above the word cloud. And so that's the order I want. So I'm just now going to present them. So. Let's do that. So I'm gonna start with the ranking. So I'm just gonna hit full screen and now head to pollev.com slash webinar and rank your favorite summer berries. I can't wait to see which ones are your favorites. Honestly, I love all berries. I look forward to the summer because of all of the yummy fruits, but let's see what you all say. Oh, looks like we're getting some responses. Ooh, blackberries are at the top. I'm surprised. Oh, very interesting. So it looks like we're getting some movement. Blackberries and raspberries are holding their place at the top. Ooh, now they're tied. That's very interesting. I mean, honestly, I feel like raspberries and blackberries kind of taste the same. I don't know if that's a hot take. Um, both very yummy, but I think they do taste the same in my opinion. Um, raspberries are now at the top with blackberries not too far behind. Oh, honestly, it's just a battle between raspberries and, oh, no, it looks like blueberries have now taken the second place spot. Very interesting with blackberries and strawberries tied and black currants and red currants on the bottom. Very, very interesting. Oh, looks like we broke the tie. Blueberries are now on top. I'm very excited for that because blueberries are my favorite summer berries, um, but I don't want to influence your decision with my bias, but I do like, oh, and now raspberries are at the top. So as you can see with the ranking activity, it's very fun because you can see the different, you know, um, orders change as people submit responses and, you know, it can create some fun debate. You know, if someone really loves blueberries and raspberries are at the top, you know, they, they might, you know, start some friendly debate on why blueberries are better, you know? So it can really lead to a lot of fun discussions, which is why I really love um, ranking activities. All right. Blueberries and strawberries are tied for first, which is very exciting. 
Um, does anyone want to break the tie? Go ahead, submit your response at pollev.com slash webinar and break this tie. Let's see what is the true top summer berry. Oh, oh, it broke the tie. It looks like raspberries is the top summer berry. Congratulations, raspberry. You are the best berry. All right, so now I'm going to go on to our word cloud. I'm just going to click next. And today I'd like to ask you, what is your favorite flower? Now with word clouds, you can submit one word in answers, or if you'd like to submit a few words, you can use an underscore or a dash to connect the responses. And you can also add emojis too. So I'd love to see some flower emojis in here. So as I wait for responses to come in, I'd like to show you how to customize your activities and add a summary look with visual settings. So customizing your activities is actually a premium feature, um, but you can learn more about that at polleverywhere.com slash plans. So I'm just going to hover over the right corner here and open my visual settings. So this is where you can really customize the colors and the font of your activities. So first, I'm going to head over to this color scheme um, drop down here. So I'm just going to expand. So this is where you can set a theme for your entire activity. So if you open this here, you'll get these different colors. And if you click one of them, it'll set a color scheme for the entire activity. So I'm just going to click this green color. And as you can see, it changed the primary text, the secondary text, the background, and the secondary background all at once. So now it's this lovely green theme. But you can also do, um, change each one individually. So let's say I want to set the text color to this nice, you know, watermelon color. And the second I'll do this like orange color. Um, and then the background is a little bright for my taste. So I'm going to change that to a muted green and then this one to another muted green color. So now we have this really pretty like watermelon inspired. Actually, what if I do this brown? so that it looks like watermelon seeds. Ooh, ooh, I love that. That looks really pretty. So yeah, you can really have fun with the different colors. Um, so you can change them all individually here, but if you wanted to change the font, you can do that as well. So here, if you um, expand the font tab, you can change the font type. So currently it's at Source Sans Pro, which is the default, but let's see what happens if I change it to this one. Ooh, this one is such a pretty font. So I love that. So as you can see, it changed the font for everything. So the instructions, the question, and the responses. So I like the colors I chose. And you can also change the size. So if I want the responses to be really oh, small or big, um, you can do that. I'm just going to leave it to small. And now next, you can also, again, same thing. You can change the voting instructions, which is this top bar up here. You can, you know, change the size, change the alignment, and change the colors as well. And then you can also change the title. So same thing, you can change the colors, and you can also add your logo if you'd like. And then lastly, this is the most exciting, the background. So not only can you change the background color, you can also add an image as your background. So I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to click browse, and I'm going to use this lovely spring cleaning background that I made myself. All right, I'm just going to click upload. Give it a second. I think it's a large image, so it might take a minute. All right, now I have my lovely floral background added to this activity and now it is exactly how I want it to be. So I'm gonna click save changes, make sure you save your changes. And now it went from being, you know, gray and blue to this lovely um, green and pink and floral background. And, you know, if you feel like the background is too distracting, you can totally take it out. And if you feel like the words are a little harder to read, you can change the colors so that it's a little more readable. But I really like how it looks. I think it's very pretty. It's very spring. So that is how you can really customize an activity. All right, so now I'm going to go through some of your responses. I totally forgot about that for a second. So it looks like the top responses are sunflowers, roses, and tulips. Those are all my favorites as well. I'm excited to see that. Um, we have hydrangeas, lilies, trillium. I don't know how to read that. Crocosomia? Tell me if that's correct. Um, gladiola, nasturtiums, daylily. 
maple venus venus flytrap is that a flower i didn't know that was a flower but that's a very cool favorite flower to have lavender iris daffodils poppies dandelions gerbera tell me if that's correct gerbera and then you can also see we have some emojis too so we have this hibiscus flower here this rose tulip sunflower and a lovely bouquet of roses here so as you can see word clouds are just very beautiful and colorful and especially when you add emojis it really adds a lot of fun to your word cloud so thank you all for sharing your favorite flowers with me they're all my favorites as well so now i'd like to show you how you can set one custom branding to your response page so I'm just going to exit out here and I'm actually going to head to my settings, my settings. Yes. And this is where, you know, you can change your username and all of that. But today I'm interested in showing you how you can change your branded response page. So I'm just going to click branded response page. And this too, I believe is also a premium feature. So if you'd like to learn more, or if you'd like to learn which plans have this feature available, head to polleverywhere.com slash plans. All right, back to this page here. Now, this is where you can add your own style, colors, and logos to your response page. Your response page is where your participants go to respond to your activities. So if you head to polyev.com slash webinar, you probably see this page right here. This is the default settings, and that's what I have at the moment, but let's customize it. So first, I'm gonna go through this colors tab here. And first you see this screen preview. This just will change what you see in the preview here. So currently this is what the wait screen looks like. But if I wanted to see what, you know, a multiple choice question currently looks like, this is what it looks like. So you can really change it so that as you're making these changes to the different colors, you can see what it would look like on your participants' devices. So I'm just gonna leave it at wait screen for today. Um, but I'm actually going to change the background color. So currently it's this like, dark gray color. So there are two ways you can change the colors here. You can add in your um, organization specific hex code for a specific color, or you can also just use this little customizer tool here where you can like drag it to make it lighter and darker and you can change the colors here. Now, in my case, Poll Everywhere does have some uh, dedicated color. So I'm just gonna paste that in. So I just copied our, our hex code and just pasted it in. And now you can see it's changed to this lovely light, light, light blue color. And then next, I wanna change the header. As you can see, it's currently white. So it's hard to read. I'm just going to put in another color, this lovely Poll Everywhere blue color so that it's easier to read. And as you can see, this preview is updating as I put it in. And then lastly, I wanna change the header. So this color here, this little bottom bar here is the header. So I'm just gonna add in my hex code color. And now it's a lot easier to see the instructions on your end. So that's how you can change the colors. Now, if you go into content, this is where you can add your logo and change the words that are presented here. So I'm just gonna click select. And I'm going to put in our Poll Everywhere logo. So it should update the preview. There it is. Yep. So now you all will see our logo on the response page, which is really great for, you know, if you're, um, you want to make sure your participants are heading to the right page and they're, they're not sure. Well, if they see your logo, then they'll know that they're on the right page. So next, you can also change the title and the description. So for this one, I'm going to put welcome. And then for the description, I'm going to put prepare to be polled. And now look at that. Now it's nice and updated. And now if you had to pull, um, once I save the changes, when you head to pollev.com slash webinar, this is what you'll see. So I'm just going to click save. And now that is all up to date. So that is how you can really add your own customization to your response page and really create a cohesive presentation experience. All right, so those are all how you customize your activities. I'm gonna head back to the My Activities page now. And as you can see, as I mentioned before, you I have all of my activities neatly organized into these groups. So you're probably wondering, well, how do you create a group? Well, I'm gonna show you. So up at the top here, you'll see this option here, create new group. So I'm just gonna click that. And then here is where you can put in a name. So I'm just gonna put 
um, spring cleaning here. And I'm just going to click create group. And there it is. Now you have a new group for you to put activities into. And that's it. Super easy. And now next, the next thing I want to show you is how to um, change activities from the activities page. So you probably leave, why did you leave this test activity? You know, you know, you're doing a presentation. Why would you leave that there? I did it on purpose. So as I was practicing for today's webinar, I was testing out the different visual settings and making sure that everything was perfect for today's presentation. So now that I don't need this test activity, let me show you how you can change it. So I'm just gonna open it. And as you can see, um, you know, I was playing around with the colors. I was testing out the background. I was testing out how to respond. I was checking out the branded response page. So now I have, you know, these responses here and all of these settings. So I'm just going to head back to the activities page. Now, let's say I, you know, really liked the visual, like the visual settings I set, but I had all those test responses that I, I submitted them myself. Let's say I wanted to clear that. So I'm just going to select the response. And up at the top here is where you have the option to do different things to your activity. So, you know, you can group it, you can download responses, but because I want to reuse this activity, but I don't want those test responses in there, I'm actually gonna click clear and this will clear the responses and will archive it for me so that I can see it later. And once I click that, I'm gonna click okay. And now if I open it again, those responses are all gone and it's ready for me to reuse all over again. So that's one thing you can do. Now let's say I wanted to change the question. So I'm just gonna, you know, select in this action bar here, if you open it, it'll expand and it'll, you have the option to edit. So I'm just gonna click edit and I'm gonna change it. So currently it's the title of the word cloud is test one, but I'm gonna change it to what is your favorite summer beverage. So once I've changed that, I'm going to click save. And now it is updated to say, what is your favorite summer beverage? So now it doesn't say test one. It, you know, doesn't have responses anymore. And I can use it in my next presentation if I'd like. Now, um, let's say I did all that, but I don't actually want to use it. And it's kind of cluttering up my folder here, you can actually delete activities. So I'm just going to select it. And then up at the top here, again, you have the option to delete it. So I'm just going to click delete. And now it's gone. And what happens when you delete activities is that it actually goes to your trash. So I'm going to go, you can find your trash up here. Um, you just click trash. And this will take you to the trash page. Items in the trash are permanently deleted after 30 days. If you accidentally delete an activity, you can actually restore it. So let's say I changed my mind and I want to do it, want to use it again, I'll just select it, click restore, and it'll be back in my activities page. Um, but also if you, you know, don't want to wait the 30 days, you want this activity to be gone, you can just click delete forever and it'll be gone forever. And yeah, so that is the trash page. So I'm going to head back to the activities page. Now, everything I showed you is what your activities page currently looks like, but I'd actually like to share an exciting new release coming your way soon. So I'm actually going to head back into my slides here and click present. And so introducing folders. Your activities page will have a brand new look this summer. Folders is a new way to categorize the activities you use, which can now contain other folders within them. So for more information, please head to polleverywhere.com slash folders and sign up for the interest form to get notified of when we launch folders. So this is very exciting. What you see now will may look a little different in a bit. And um, we hope that this will improve your presentation experience and also um, make it easier for you to organize your activities in a way that, you know, works well for your workflow. So that is everything I wanted to show you today. So now that we have shared our best spring cleaning tips, I'd like to take a few minutes to answer some of your burning questions. So it looks like we have a few questions already, but um, feel free to drop 
any question you have in the Zoom Q&A box and I will answer them. And it doesn't have to be directly related to spring cleaning. If you have questions about Pull Everywhere, I'm happy to help. So the first question we have here is, can you drag and move more than one poll activities at a time? So yes. So let me just head back to the activities page here. So um, you won't be able to just like drag them all at once, but you can actually select multiple activities. And then if you go up here and click move, this will actually give you the option to move it to another group or move it to another presenter. So this is a way to do multiple activities at once. But actually too, um, you can actually drag folders too. So if you hold onto this folder, you can actually drag it around in a different order as well. So that's another way you can move multiple activities as well. How do you add pictures? So this depends on where you want to add them. Um, for example, if I was creating, you know, like a clickable image activity, um, you know, you can upload it here. Um, but you can also, um, with with multiple choice and word clouds, you can also actually add an image while you're creating the uh, activity. This is different from the background. If I added it, actually, let me just show you. If I added it as a, let's just do favorite logo. Um, and add this to the spring cleaning and create. If I added it here, it won't be in the background of the word cloud. It'll actually just kind of be on the side here. So if you um, were to respond, the responses would be on the right side here and the image would be on the other side. Now, this is different from what I showed you earlier where I added it to the background. As you saw before, like the image, the words were on top of it because it's a background image. So this will all just depend on what kind of um, visual setting you're looking for. But um, that is another way you can also add um, images. Which questions can you add a background image to? Is it only word clouds or are there others? Um, it's not just the word clouds. Uh, you can do it for most activity types. Let me just go back to this slide here. The branded response page is per user, correct? Can you set this for all users on the account? Yes, um, this you can actually set the branded response page for other users. Um, let me actually go back to the settings. So head to my settings, head to branded response page. So um, in this case, I in my account, I have other presenters. So if I wanted to apply these very specific branded response page settings to other presenters, all I have to do is to click apply these settings to all presenters. And it tells me how many other presenters I have. And if I click save, it'll set it for all the other accounts. Um, if you're an account admin or an owner of the account. These are all wonderful questions. Do we have any more questions? Feel free to drop them in the Zoom Q&A box. I'm happy to answer any questions. No, it doesn't look like we're getting any more questions. Feel free to drop them in the Zoom Q&A or the chat. I am happy to answer any questions. Okay, it looks like we have another question. How do you respond with an emoji? So this will be dependent on your own device. You have to use the emoji keyboard on your device. 
but it will show up in poll everywhere activities. We do support emojis, but um, in order to respond with an emoji, you will need the emoji keyboard on your device. Any more questions? So you can only use poll everywhere from a different screen than your Zoom meeting. No. Um, so if you're a participant and your presenter is, you know, presenting on a Zoom meeting and you are participating, um, you can actually, you know, use the same screen if you get the app. So we actually have a desktop participant app. And if you download that, you can download it at polleverywhere.com slash app. And the great thing about the participant desktop app is that um, it will notify you when the presenter is presenting another activity and it'll take you to the Poll Everywhere app and then it'll be um, it'll take you there seamlessly and then you can respond and then you can easily go back to your Zoom meeting. So highly recommend get, um, trying out the participant desktop app. How can I make the question mandatory instead of optional in a survey? So um, this is a really great question and I really appreciate your feedback. Um, we don't have this option available at the moment, but um, we will definitely pass this along and see if we can do anything about this. Can you set background for a group other than more question in the visual settings for each. Yes, this is actually a wonderful question. And let me show you, you can actually set template activities for your activities. So I'm actually going to, I don't know why I closed that. Um, I'm gonna go back to my settings and I'm gonna go to activity settings here. And this is where you can set default settings for all of your activities. Um, so, you know, if you have different, you know, response limitations, you can set that here. But to answer this question, you can set template activities. So I'm just gonna set here. And I'm actually going to select um, the word cloud. So if I remember correctly, it was, what is your, what is your, favorite flower. So this is the activity. This is the word cloud earlier that I set the visual settings on. So I can actually set this as the template activity. So it'll save all of the visual settings in the background that I put and apply it to any new activities that I create. And you can also apply it to all existing activities. So if I didn't click, click, click this, then all of my old activities will have their old settings. But if I click this, all of the old activities will have um, their this new um, setting. So if I click save and now go back to activities and create a new activity. Let's say I do a multiple choice. So let's say, how are you? I put great, okay, awesome. Then I just add that to the group I wanna put it in and I click create. There you go. As you can see, all of the colors that I set are there now. The background image is there and it'll be there for every new activity I create. And if you don't want this anymore, you can um, change the template activity or you can just remove it altogether. That's a great question. Okay, one more question. Can you make the changes you showed us today from within PowerPoint? Or do you have to go to the activities page on your, um, on your, on your website? Yes, you can absolutely do this in the PowerPoint app. So I actually demonstrate this in the getting started webinar. So if you'd like to see how to do all of that in PowerPoint, um, head to polleverywhere.com slash webinars and register for the getting started webinar. Um, but to answer your question, yes. So um, the visual settings and all of that, you can do that directly within PowerPoint. You don't need to go to the website to make those changes. All right. Any more questions? I'm really loving all of these questions. Happy to answer anything else. Um, we'll take a few more before we end for today. Any, any more burning questions? I'm actually gonna leave the 
previous slide up for you so that you all, if you're interested in learning more about folders, you can head to polleverywhere.com slash folders um, to learn more about that exciting new release coming soon. But yeah, any more questions? I'm open, ready to take them. Drop them in the Zoom Q&A. Any more questions? It looks like some are coming in. Again, just to reiterate, if you want a you know, more detailed breakdown on how to create activities and how to um, you know, make different changes and also to participate in a live competition, head to pulleverywhere.com slash webinars to register for our Getting Started webinar. Um, you will see me again. I am the host of the Getting Started webinar and I hope to see you there. Um, it looks like we really don't have any more questions. One last call. One last call for questions. Any burning questions that you've always wanted to know about Poll Everywhere? Again, I'd like to reiterate this session today is recorded um, and we will send a link out in a follow-up email, but if you ever wanted to rewatch any of our webinars, so the Getting Started webinar, Advanced Basics webinar, um, this webinar, you can find all of that at polleverywhere.com slash webinars. And that's where you'll find, you know, registrations for any upcoming live webinars, as well as recordings of any past webinar we've ever hosted. Okay, well, if there are no more questions, then I'd like to thank you all for joining me today for this Spring Cleaning with Pull Everywhere webinar. I hope you all learned something new today, and I hope you take some of these tips that I share today and go and clean your digital space. You know, if take some time to clean your digital space, just as you would to clean your home or your office or wherever you're at. So. Thanks again for joining. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. And um, yeah, thank you for joining. <laughs>